Hello everyone, my name is Wolfie Sia. I'm going to be your caster today for the game of Zero Mechanics Frost versus The Nameless. We have uh, a little bit of a best of three here in the Platinum League, as far as I'm aware. I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me on that. We are, well, we are going to be jumping straight into the draft here. Unfortunately, my color caster, it seemed, uh, well, the original color caster that I, I had scheduled with me, unfortunately could not come with me. So. I'm going to be your uh, solo caster today, unless we have uh, somebody else joining for us. Uh, however, we won't really be knowing that until it is happening. But jumping onto the draft, we're already halfway through it. Ezreal just getting picked up here for the Nameless. The Ezreal Karma lane going to be very, very strong there in the bot lane. Uh, Zero Mechanics Frost. Let's not have an AD carry just yet. They already have the Morgana, and they have a Zinchao as well. I was about to say that. Maybe they could flex the Morgana over there in the jungle as well. A little bit of a MSI 2021 flashback. But it does not appear to be the case with the Xin Zhao. The NAR priority as well out there for Zero Mechanics Frost. We've seen a lot of uh, NAR in the major leagues, especially uh, LCK. Uh, we've seen some re really great play with that. I wonder I wonder if they're going to be picking up the NAR for Team La Tameless because we don't have... I mean, the Silas, rather, for Team Nameless because it... They don't have a mid laner just yet. Uh, I can't really see whether uh, I can't necessarily see whether or not Silas is banned. They're going to pick up the Sivir, which is a very good pick, I'd say. You know, you could shove out those lanes very, very quickly. However, the power that the Sivir Morgana is going to have a little bit going to get uh, mitigated a lot by the Ezreal Karma lane. Ezreal Karma very oppressive, very uh, lots of damage, lots of perk, and. The most that Sivir and Morgana, I think, can do is just push out the lanes and get stuff done elsewhere. They do have the uh, Xin Zhao that can help them out. The Orianna getting picked up there in the mid lane, blind pick. It's pretty good into Silas. And it doesn't look like Team Name it doesn't look like Team Nameless is gonna be going for it, which is a little bit strange. They're gonna be picking up the Kasadin for themselves. Uh, I don't know. I I don't know if that's necessarily the best. A lot of scaling here for the side of Nameless Umbra, but also their lane, their lane prowess is going to get absolutely mitigated here by all the lanes. The only lane that I'm seeing here that can get some priority is bot lane with the Ezreal Karma. But even still, I don't think that's going to win you the game. So the overall team, the overall team composition for Zero Mechanics roster, I'm quite liking it just from the laning phase itself. However, Nameless Umbra does have that scaling with the Kassadin, with the GP, and uh, an Enchanter on the backside as well, with an Ezreal. So if this game reaches 30-40 minutes, I'm fairly certain Nameless Umbra is going to absolutely tear through the map, but we'll just have to see if they're able to prolong the game all the way up to that point. It's just going to be up to Zero Mechanics Frost to try and... Uh, try and take control of the early game, snowball their leads with the leaning powers that they have with the Nar, with the Orianna, Sivir, Morgana in the bot lane, gonna have a little bit of trouble for the first few levels, Once, but once Sivir gets those boomerangs and gets those raw damage in there, she's gonna be feeling a lot better, and... Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm really liking Zero Mechanics Frost here. The more I look at it, the more I fall in love with it, because... It's just, it's just really good, you know? Decent team fighting. They have a great front-to-back team fight. Uh, and I just, I, there's nothing else to say about it. That's just, it's just great in itself. And Nameless Umbra, all they have for them is scaling, scaling, scaling. And that's kind of the, it's kind of the theme here with these types of compositions uh, when it's, uh, you know, like a tempo lead based composition against a uh, scaling composition. It's really just up to the execution of the tempo lead based composition if they're able to get through the early game if they're able to absolutely demolish everything then the game should be theirs to win however if nameless umbra are over here and they're able to mitigate that power that the enemy team has in the early game and they manage to get to their power spikes get to their power points where they'll be able to actually do anything and participate in the game that is really when they're going to be able to do things that they want to do with the Kazadin, you know, level 16 Kazadin, as well as some, you know, GPs and Ezreals and a lot. Speaking in terms of range, 
Nameless Umbra has very little. They have the barrels and a bunch of Pokemon Karma Ezreal, but their mid laner and their uh, jungler very, very, very low range. They're gonna need to be right in front of. Uh, uh, they're gonna be right. They're gonna need to be right in front of Zero Mechanics, uh, Frost, and. I mean, that's kind of what Zero Mechanics want you to do. They have the Xin Zhao, they have the Nar, they have a Morgana with the ulti, with the Q. You know, going to be dealing a lot of CC, a lot of frontline for this Orianna and for this Sivir to pop off. And it's kind of a working, that's kind of working in favor for them in terms of the uh, team fight prowess there. But like I said earlier, scaling, scaling, scaling. If Nameless Umbra manage to get their power points, get their items, get everything that they need, then that should just be pretty much it for them. We're going to have to see as we see the rest of the picks here getting drafted for the draft phase. Zero Mechanics Frost versus Nameless Umbra. Is that a new? What? Oh, I think somebody, I think somebody picked Nunu uh, accidentally. And uh, I think the uh, <laughs> match is now getting remade. It's a little bit of a blunder there from Zero, Me Zero Mechanics Frost, it appears. We should be heading straight into the draft right again. Everybody's going to be doing it again. Same man, same picks. And I'm really like, I'm, uh, the more I think about it, the more I really do love uh, Zero Mechanics for us as team composition. They are a tempo based team, and we have seen tempo based compositions fall out of thin air because they're not able to execute it properly. But uh, we also have seen tempo-based compositions pop off and, you know, do T1 things where, just, where they just absolutely stomp through the early game and end the game in 20, 25 minutes. If Zero Mechanics Frost are able to do that, that's going to make me really happy and it's going to be really good for them. It's going to be a really good showing for them to show uh, Nameless Umbra that they're able to perform using such a composition you know, such a high risk high reward composition like this where they have to get leads early game they have to you know get a tempo going and keep the game under their hands under their control they're gonna need a lot of vision set up gonna need a lot of uh priority in both the mid lane and the top lane i think the nar nar versus gp match i've seen this a million times before and it's kind of an even matchup. Most people would say skill matchup, really, but we've seen we've seen it falter in the hands of the GP. The Nar necessary, the Nar's uh, very good early game as well can kind of mitigate that power that Young Plank has with Parlay. And uh, we'll just have to see what sort of priority Nar is able to bring out in this laning composition. I mean, in this uh, team composition for Zero Mechanics Frost. I'm gonna be very excited to see how that works. As we see the draft getting remade here, uh, hopefully nobody picks new new and Willem again. Uh, yeah, there's not much else to say. Uh, Nameless Umbra's team composition is all about scaling, 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 and if they get to that point where they do scale, you know, level 16 and Saturn, three item Gangplank, three item Ezreal. You know, you have the Enchanter and the Karma and the beefy frontline. I'm assuming for. Uh, their jungler in the Gragas, if they're able to, uh, you know, I'm assuming Gragas is going to be a, is going to be building tank. Probably, probably don't want to build AP with the Kassadin already. You want some form of rank. You want some form of frontline for your Ezreal. Going to be very interesting to see. I suppose you don't necessarily need it, considering Zero Mechanics Frost don't really have anyone to dive on to the backline except for Nar and. Xin Zhao, but if Nar and Xin Zhao are diving into Ezreal, then you don't really you don't really have a frontline for your Sivir and your Orianna. So the Kassadin is going to be able to freely reign over those two if you don't have a peel for them. So team fight's definitely going to be like uh, very up favored here. I feel for Nameless, even though their team composition does not have much lane power except for the bot lane over there going to be interesting to see how things work out here as we jump into the game teams are going to be loading out their runes their drafts everything that they're really doing we have nar zin zhao oriana sivir and morgana for zero mechanics frost on the blue side meanwhile on the red side we have gangplank gragas kassadin ezreal and karma both teams have set positions both teams have things they want to do and both teams have uh, ideal goals in their minds, in their uh, communications. 
what they want to do, what they have to do, what their wind conditions are, and all that kind of things. As we do jump in to the spectator delay here, two minutes and 30 seconds, it's going to be very interesting to see who wins this game out in the CCS Platinum League. Zero Mechanics Frost versus Team Nameless, Nameless Umbra. We are going to be jumping into a break here, I believe. And uh, yeah, we'll be coming back after the spectator delay here. Give us a few. We'll see you then. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the game, and we have a pause immediately. How how wonderful is that? I am gonna to have to introduce you to my color for today. Everyone, welcome, Flaccid. Hey, Flaccid, how's it going? Howdy, howdy. Apparently, we up? didn't even get to start. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Rihanna. Unfortunately, left right as the game began. But here we are, jumping straight into the game. Zero Mechanics Frost versus Nameless Umbra. All teams ready here. For the beginning of the game, uh, I wanna I wanna get your thoughts on the team compositions here because I only got a little bit of insight. There's so many things to talk about, uh, and both of these team compositions. What are you feeling, Placid? I think the game is frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, think... you know, that is a feeling. <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay, I think probably one of those, probably one of the million replay mod bugs that League of Legends does have. That is a thing that they do. I think. That is. Yeah. That is. <laughs> I mean, they got a lot of mobility, but the Sivir's powerful right now. She's strong, so I think they're gonna have a really good, a really good easy time for Sivir early game. 
Yeah, we already see some a little bit of pressure getting set up here by Zero Mechanics Frost. It looks like Xin Zhao trying to put some vision here. They really want to know where this Gragas is going to be because I think that's going to help out a lot. Knowing where the Gragas is going, knowing where the Gragas is and his pathing is going to help out your laners a lot because that means that they could play the lane out. You know, the, this game is entirely Zero Mechanics Frost's game to win. And if they if, and if their lanes aren't absolutely dominating, they're gonna have a really really difficult time later into the game. We do see both junglers starting here on the bottom side of the map. Both of them, I assume, are gonna be going pathing up top there, which is a very volatile lane here. The no ignites taken for neither for you know both solo laners here. All TP flash and uh, yeah, even without the ignite, even without the ignite, I feel like there's still gonna be a lot of action out there. See, I, I also agree. I think they're going to be pathing top wave because, you know, they have the karma skins just be able to get out, so they're not going to be able to easily get an easy gank off them. So I'm thinking they're both going to try to fight for top lane. Yeah, I do agree. As we look here in the bottom lane, as we were saying about earlier, Karma Ezreal, incredibly oppressive. A lot of damage Q is going to get landed on there, but the Mantra's shield going to deny any sort of follow up we already see the uh the what we expected from the drop here mid lane or get, mid lane getting pushed out here for oriana the top lane they're kind of a little bit more even but in the bot lane Sivir and morgana are just getting pushed here with the power of this karma as well thieves out there things are going pretty pretty nuanced as we expected them We do see both junglers there in the top side of the map. Nar is the one that's getting a low push here, as we said earlier in the drop phase. And he's going to be popping down here to help his jungler out. Take the scuttle, which now just spawned. Gragas is going to see the uh, what's happening over there in the top lane. And he's going to transition it into making a mid lane gank, perhaps. But Oriana, a little bit too close to the tower. Probably don't want to commit to that with all flashes up. And uh, nothing's gonna get taken out there. Gragas I, is just gonna move outside and. I don't understand. There. I don't understand Gragas' pathing. I mean, Skettle's not really worth just rotating. He's got no jungles. There, his teams are pushed yeah. up. It makes no sense at all. That he is should... true. That is true. Might have possibly just went to the Krugs up there and. Uh... Helped out his top laner there, which is a pretty gankable lane, you know. Nar is pretty pretty pushed up. If he went for the Krugs and then maybe went for a cheeky uh, gank there in the top lane, may have gotten the flash out of Nar, but unfortunately, that's not the case here. Yeah. If Gragas would have been hovering top. I don't know if you could see this, but I think CS numbers are frozen. <laughs> oh, frozen. again. It's fine though, as we do see a little bit of a there gank is. here in the bot lane. The feather are gonna root up the Xin Zhao here. The Dark Binding is gonna land, even though it's... the Arcane Shift is gonna keep him away. Heal Flash is gonna get invested oh, here by the Ezreal. Very nice. Heal Flash from Xin Zhao. Gonna get the first blood. 4 0 Mechanics Frost. Beautiful, beautiful gank there in the bot lane. Punishing the pushed up Ezreal and Karma. We had that issue last week as well. <laughs> Riot fixed their program. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. All right. Now, now it's working properly. We can see the CS numbers. We can also see the death numbers, and as we can see, Ezreal, down one death. Unfortunately, it was Xin Zhao that got the kill. Usually, you want that to be on your AD carry. However, you know, giving the Xin Zhao some early power, not really that bad. Oh, good see, dodge. I guess here with the Predator, a good dodge on the Dark Binding. As you say, Xin Zhao is not here. He just got finished with the recall. Let's see if he has enough damage. The W, the heal, has to get invested here by Sivir, but... Trying to look for something more. The spell shield not really going to be used. Body slam not landing onto anyone. That's so much damage onto the karma follow flash from everyone. Ezreal is here though. Arcane shield forward. Able to get the kill onto Morgana. And Azure Mechanics Frost may have gone too far forward. Has to flash away is the Sivir. And that ends up being a one for nothing for the side of Nameless Umbra. <laughs> Zen just sees another easy gank. Oh, Question is, no. can he pull That's it off? That's a 1v2 though. That is a 1v2 though. You could easily get the karma kill, I assume, but I don't know if you feel confident. I mean, to that Ezreal who does have the sheen now. So, 
gonna be well, very he, difficult, I'd say. I would say if he can get the pop, though. He can get he one. Can, can get the pop, one and then out. Go. Oh, there it is. Charge on to Karma and he's just dead. Karma is gone from the He needs it back now. out. Ezreal trying to trade it back. I don't know if... And I'm not so certain you win this, Zhao. Mm. You do not. And Ezreal takes that kill. Two kills now onto the Ezreal. This lane is... I, I'd honestly... Jace just practically over. I did say if he just takes the kill and get out. But no. He tried he... to go for the 1v2 <laughs> and unfortunately was not able to find it. More action here in the bot lane. Let's see if he's able to trade it back for Morgana. Yes, he is! The auto attacks from Ezreal is too strong. Now 3 and 2 on this Ezreal. The shutdown is going to get reached onto Sivir, but your Ezreal is still very strong. <laughs> Man. You know, that grind just was 6. That would that could have been a really good gank, though. Oh, yeah. Oriana has the flash. Gragas does not, but probably not done something there. Cassidy trying to look for something here with the Void charge, but looks like this PB is just going to get cancelled here. A lot of power, a lot of uh, really strong early game here from Nameless Umbra, and that's kind of what we were talking about. The the only laning, uh, the only lane that they have any power in sort of is this Ezreal Karma lane, and they're using it very well, right? You know, they're you know Ezreal is already three and two. Sivir is getting some push now, but we're seeing you know what really ends up mattering is the kills, and Ezreal is getting all the kills. Meanwhile, Xin Zhao is the one with two kills for. Uh, Zero Mechanics Frost, and that's not really what you want to see here. The Drake is going to get picked up here by Xin Zhao with the power that the uh, bot lane has. You know, you see the lane there pushed up earlier, and he's just able to put it off with Gragas in the top lane. Cassidy, look for something here in the mid lane. And uh, that's about it. I think this really throws a Genshin the rumors. It's absolutely instrumental that Zero Mechanics gets that early Drake because that means that they're uh, 15 minutes closer to getting the soul and they want to get the soul as quick as possible because getting that soul means getting that Elder. I mean, uh, getting the Elder to spawn. And if you get that Elder, the team composition like this, it's going to be absolutely massive because you want to be able to get control of the game. You want to end it as soon as possible and not let the Kassad and not let the Gangplank scale up. And uh, that Drake is going to be really important for them, I feel. A little bit of trading here in the top lane. Megan are about to get popped here. But Great. Papa skips. Great rotation by the Nar. Yeah, able to dodge out that barrel from Gangplank here. Gragas is going to be here, I believe. He is not spotted, actually. Megan are about to time up Cannon Barrage. Going to get set down on the wave. And the Gragas is getting cooked for dinner. Is he able to trade it back? No, he is not. Gangplank takes that kill. And... Uh... Remember when we said that the team tempo-based compositions need execution? Well, Zero Mechanics Force are not really executing on it. <laughs> They're really not at all. Uh, Nameless Umbra now, 1500 gold in the lead. One kill above them. They don't have a Drake, but... They're already getting some kills into their uh, champions here. Which is not at all what you want to see. I don't know, I don't know how to feel about this early game from Zero Mechanics Frost. Minute, uh, Drake now gonna be spawning in three minutes. The Herald, I believe, there is getting taken by Xin Zhao. Oh no, he just finished it, yeah. You know, Riot should really add an announcement for what their Herald is taken, you know. I don't know why they don't do that. A lot of trading here in the bot lane, but ultimately it's just gonna lead to a pushed wave here, and I'm interested to see where Xin Zhao is gonna put that, uh, Herald in, but we see a Dark Binding onto the Karma, a lot of damage with the Ricochets on the Hunt as well. Ezreal trying to turn it, Trucial Barrage, not gonna get landed on. Lots of damage onto the Karma, you're gonna have to get out of there a little bit. The Inspire gonna be keeping you alive, but Kassad in here with our Roam to the bot lane is seen on a war. Ooh, four bots. Dragas here as well, it's gonna be a 4v3. Oriana is getting some plates there in the mid lane, and that's exactly what you want to see. This is a net win, I'd say, for Zero Mechanics Frost. Because Oriana is getting some kills, and the bot lane of Zero Mechanic Cross could just back up here. We do see some trade backs here in the tray in the uh, turret plating here for Ezreal. There's a flash. Wind becomes lightning. Does not hit the Karma as the Karma flashes away. And uh, I don't know. Oriana got a lot of plates there in the. Oh no, he only got one in the mid lane. It appears. And oh my. What? Resta is trying to get cheeky right now. 
Well, did you see that crit from Gangplank? Jesus Christ! <laughs> Gangplank has an essence trooper and he crit uh, Nar, who was at like 300 health, and he crit him and he killed him. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Essence River and crit gangplank is something that is just, it's so amazing. Oh, overly busted, but Jesus Christ, it's amazing to watch. He's just gonna pop the Nar up there, gonna get himself a plate, gonna get the wave to crash in there as well. Nar has no TP, and uh, this game is kinda gripping out of control for Zero Mechanics Frost. You see the plate there in the bot lane from uh, Xin Zhao trying to get a flash wind becomes lightning. Here we see a wind becomes lightning getting dodged away from as well, and the Nameless Umbra. This is kind of their game to win now, considering the lead that they got that they're not supposed to have this early into the game. We do see the Rift Herald here getting dropped in the mid lane. Lots of, uh, there should be a bunch of plates going over to Orianna and Zin Zhao. They're trying to look for a ring gauge, but they're propped from Gragas. Not really going to be looking for it, with the low health bars on the Karma and the Kassadin. This is, uh, this is, uh... I don't know, this, this game feels like it's getting out of control here for uh, Nameless Umbra. Lots of damage, Spell Shield gonna block out a Mystic Shot there on the hut, gonna get propped here just to clear out the wave up here. Xin Zhao here actually gonna be going forward, the Cannon Barrage gonna slow him down a little bit. Ezreal may be caught out in a position he does not want to be. Flashes forward! Oh, double dodge! The Shinnikum Lightning does not <laughs> land as well as the Dark Binding. Has to eat over the wall, he's gonna be looking straight into the eyes of the Orianna. Gonna give that kill away, but I think he'll take that trade any day of the week. Nameless Umbra here, absolutely popping off, really putting up a good performance here. But in the top lane, we see a little bit of a gank here. Receive the body slam, lands the ooh, <laughs> <laughs> the boomerang actually, the boomerang on the toss around. Gonna find the gank, the Gragas. I'm on, I I don't know if uh, that gives you vision of the enemy uh, of whoever it hit, but I was able to spot out that Gragas is there in the second drake. Gonna get picked up here for Zero Mechanics Frost. These are absolutely Ooh. instrumental. The command shockwave gonna get the kill onto the overextended Karma. A little bit questionable positioning there from the support. I don't know what she was trying to do there, but he probably shouldn't have done it. I gotta say it's refreshing to see uh, Zero 60 on a mobile champion. The last two times I saw him, he was not on a mobile champion. But it is... He's doing really well. Party cast there, gonna get landed out, and there's just not enough damage with the cast not landing. A teleport from the mid laner to help his top laner out. And Gragas, he's been trying to make plays in the top lane, but he's not able to find it, unfortunately. As you see... The teleport here, another plate for Orion here in the top lane. So much damage, Jesus Christ. Oh, this game is uh, gonna be one hell of a game as we see Xin Zhao here, gonna help his top laner push this wave out. Now, Colts fan actually doing a lot of work helping his uh, laners out here. So he's gonna spawn out the Gragas here and the Gangplank as well. Jeez, my god, those crits are insane. See here, Colt fan really helping out his uh, top laner here. Got a good reset. I believe he's gonna recall now to get the. Uh, I believe he's building into a stride break or maybe a um, uh, divine Sunderer there. I don't know if that's the best idea. Probably want a, a uh, Trinity Force in this game, but we see some a little bit of Alka gaming in the top. The action never stops here in this game, as we see. Xin Zhao over there. He's gonna move over the ward. Orion. He's gonna get caught out here. Does have the flash wind becomes lightning. Does not hit onto the gangplank now here comes the body slam flash not gonna be landing onto colt's fan it's a bunch of botched engages from both sides here the crescent guard gonna be knocking back the gragas here nice dodge onto the gag barrel there trying to turn it around onto gangplank but the crits are too much man orion is the luckiest player on the rift as he's crit like so many times <laughs> with one essence river the true shot barrage is not gonna land a nice footwork there from the morgana but uh, the top lane is uh, kind of in shambles now. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know how to feel about this. <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like Gangplank is just gonna recall here, and he's gonna get some cr uh, cloaks. He's gonna do a lot of damage because for some reason every single parlay he hits is just a crit. The other side of the map, though, Ezreal Karma getting a lot of power here, and that is kind of their, you know, they they, they have been doing that for the rest of the entirety of the game, and uh, 
with the lead that they have, they are able to do this. These Mystic Shots do so much damage with the Essence Reva. As we see two people roam down here, it's going to be a 4v4 in the bot lane, it appears. Dragon is up in two minutes, nothing really to fight for. The Herald is up in uh, two here, as we're going to be going in. The Shockwave going to get flashed away from, but just a failure here. Might have gotten caught out the Party Cask. Going to be partying everyone here, but we have the Flash Prowler's Claw. Farley kill, the Gangplank wants some food tonight, and he's gonna get fresh Gnar for dinner. It's a lot of damage here, onto the Orianna. But, uh, the bot lane play not really working out for, uh, Zero Mechanics Frost there. The shock play was just flashed away from Trusha Barrage. It's gonna land, yes it is, it's gonna cancel the recall, and it's not able to kill, unfortunately, if he had first strike. That would be a kill right there. But the top lane is an absolute disaster at this point. There's nothing you could do. Uh... Gangplank has two items. Nar is about to build his first. I think he is going to be going for the uh, Triforce, which is what I wanted. But there's just nothing to do here. Audacious charge with the Bindu comes lightning. Gonna get Arcane Shift away from from the Ezreal. Gale Force forward from the Sivir, trying to look for something, but you don't have the ult. You don't have any follow up and engage, and you're not really going to get that kill. Rift Walk onto the Orianna here. Might have to invest this flash to get away. Uh, Void Pulse. There to get some... <laughs> but the flash forward, the command attack. Not able to find a kill, no Gragas here with the Dark Binding in the Tormented Soil. I don't know if that's really good for you. Gangplank's gonna be moving up here in the top lane, and uh, the game is kind of running away from Zero Mechanics Frost. We see Orianna try to make a play there, trying to get the solo kill onto the Kassadin, but unfortunately he's not able to find it, even with a Flash Engage. And, uh, I don't know. See an Inspire here with the Feather, has to flash away the Essence Falk, unfortunately not landing, Dark Binding as well, True Shop Barrage, let's see if he lands, nope! And uh... Yeah, I don't know how else to feel about this, oh no, I don't think, I don't think Blob Blob here is uh... aware of what happened to Sivir in the rework. I just found this out earlier actually, before the cast, I was playing some League of Legends, I played some Sivir, and I found out that they removed the uh, you know how when you uh, block a, sh a spell with your E? It mm -hmm. used to give you mana, but now they remove that. Instead of giving mana, it gives you health and the uh, the passive of uh, Sivir. As we see a TP here, Arcane Shift forward on the hunt. Not ready, you don't really even have enough mana. The auto attack is not able to find him. And Papa Skips is here to take that kill. Crescent Guard trying to do something. It's a 1v3 in the red side river here. That's a lot of healing from the Gore Drinker, but... I don't think you have enough healing to get that done. Now the Nar in a bit of a... Terrible position. The recall here from the Morgana is actually gonna save her. And it's oh, the roots. Get through away There's from the, the roots. The root is gonna land. Mega Nar gonna get popped, but he's still very dead. Orion is gonna take that kill. 5 0 now for this gangplank. The Drake is up, and it looks like Nameless Umbra are gonna be looking for it. Man, I don't know how gangplank became 5 0, but gangplank became 5 0, and now this is his game basically. This is a ship. He's going to be raising the tides here for Nameless Umbra, and I don't really know if there's anything that Zero Mechanics Ross can do. What a great time for a pick. <laughs> yeah, what an amazing time for a pick there. I feel like I feel like that was after you got killed into the SU, you should have just immediately backed up, but the Zinja was caught out, and they were very, very deep into the jungle, so I don't really know if you had enough time to leave there but i'm very unfortunate for the nora here one and four now for papa skips it's uh not feeling too good no as we see excuse me as we see two cloaks here for the gangplank <laughs> he really wants to one shot everyone here and i feel like he can i feel like he has the capabilities to do so well he no is problem. playing crit well, plank <laughs> he is playing Crit Plank, and uh, with Crit Plank, you know, uh, with uh, Zero Mechanics Frost not really having a uh, full-on frontline right now, all they have is the Gnar and the Xin Xiao, but they don't really have any tanky items. They have the Triforce and the Gore Drinker. That's not really going to save you in the team fight. We see the uh, Cloth Armor there for Xin Xiao, probably going to be building into a Death Stance. I don't know if that's exactly the best idea, but... We're gonna help mitigate the damage, the burst that this crit plank has. As we see, the Herald gonna get dropped here in the oh. mid lane. Zero Mechanics Frost bot lane is stuck between a rock and a hard place. It looks like Sivir is out there getting 1v2 while Gragas tries to look for the play onto the Morgana, but the Flash is gonna keep him away. Meanwhile, Sivir 
It's just uh, dead now, uh, Gragas here. Gonna land a body slam, cask everything. The Essence Fox is also there, but the Shot Barrage is also gonna land. Mystic Shot not able to, and Oriana gets himself away. Oriana, the only person without a death here. Kind of impressive here from uh, just a failure. Making a lot of uh, really safe plays here. I feel like that's their only uh, win condition now. Is the Orianna 190 CS, 21 minutes in, one in. Oh, they have the Ludens and the Seraphs embrace here. Let's see if he's able to do it. The Feather, let's see if it's gonna land. Black Shield gonna keep himself safe. But the Audacious Charge forward, gonna force the Flash out of the Karma. We see some trading here in the spot lane. That Grog Assault, that hurt my soul. <laughs> Gragas OTs have not been the best this game, but as we were talking about Oriana not having that, it looks like Nameless Number are going to be setting so, um, up for it. Not able to find it. Gragas just going to be moving away. Mystic Shot there. Fortunately, it can't land Mystic Shots under the tower. That would be very overbroken if it did. And uh, they're able to defend this uh, bot lane here. A lot of people, it's a five man play here in the bot lane for Zero Mechanics Frost. I don't really know what they're doing here. Uh, Drake is going to be up in two minutes. The Baron is up as well. There's no vision for either teams there near the river whatsoever. There's a couple of red wards there for Nameless Umbra, but I think the I think the uh, the eye of the game here, the objective to get is the Drake, which is going to be spawning in two minutes. Zero uh, Nameless Umbra. They definitely want to get that for themselves. They don't want to give away the Cloud Soul for um, Zero Mechanics Frost here. That's going to be really good for them if they're able to pick it up. So, uh, it looks like Nameless Umbra are in front position to get this Drake. That means that we are going to be having a very late Elder Dragon, it appears, unless uh, Colt's fan is able to steal it. I'll have to see if he does so in a minute 30. Baron's still out. We see a uh, pretty decent 1-3-1 one, one here for both teams. I think Nameless Umbra there setting up some vision for the Baron. They might want to trade the Drake for a Baron, which is actually pretty good considering the amount of control that they have. You know, it's a Drake for Baron, you know, they're gonna be in soul point is Zero Mechanics Frost, but the Nameless Umbra is gonna have Baron and a lot of control over the map as we see oh, a the game barrage here all. for the Cold Span here. The True Shot Barrage is gonna be, get blocked out there by the Spell Shield and Body Slam keeping the Gragas away. The Black Shield actually keeping the Zhen Zhao alive as well from the Party Cask. And uh, we see some trading here in the bot lane. I don't know if you want to trade into that, no, but... Uh, you go have your fun. Look at that. Damn. Okay, well, that one didn't really create him. Is that crit? Uh, Gragas might be out, uh, uh, Nar might be out of this game, but you see the amount of control that Nameless Umbra is just able to get here that at a, they're at a 7,000, no, 8,000 gold lead here at, uh, 24 minutes into the game. They have control of all sides of the map. All three lanes, all parts of the jungle. They haven't cleared out that one war there in near the Drake pit and in the top oh. lane as well. But that parlay is gonna crit. Never. My God, <laughs> looks like they're not gonna be trading the Drake for the Baron. I think this is a safer call. No need to risk losing the uh, Drake here. They're gonna even up the Drake count two to two, and not much really that Zero Mechanics Frost can do here. Rift walk onto the Oriana here. Lots of damage with the Electrocute as well, but Oriana also deals a lot of damage with that Seraph's Embrace and the Ludens. Uh, Drake is gonna get caught up here by Nameless Umbra. Drakes are gonna get caught up here as the Shockwave is gonna get land onto the Kassadin that's getting caught out. Has to go golden as he's able to get him out. Nope, the Flash committed. However, it's not gonna be kept alive there. His first death. Kassadin yeah, his first that you know, he's been trying to make some plays here onto the Oriana, but every time Oriana's just kind of gotten his number, and uh, there's really not much that Sadin can do here in the bot lane jungle, or the <laughs> bot jungle rather. Has to flash away, is the Xin Zhao because of the cask. Finally, it's gonna land, and 782 damage from the barrel crit. Orion is carrying this game. You can see Colts fan tried to escape. No, no, no. His ult have been on point. Him. Yeah. You know, you, I mean, pretty much every fight that we see, there has been a cannon barrage everywhere, and it's it's really good, Orion. And definitely, definitely earning himself an MVP for this game. 6-0 and 2 now. 700 gold bounty here for the GP. Four items to the one. One and a half here for Norris. He's just able to build something else. Nope, nope. Four items to one and a half items. That is a, it's not what you want to see at all.
It feels like solo queue levels of uh, dominance here because even though the kills don't necessarily say it, you know, they're they're up like how many kills? That's five kills, you know. That's that is a lot of kills. That's like an ace, but also the the amount of uh, choking that Nameless Umbra have done here to Zero Mechanics Frost, the amount of control that they've had over the over the entire map has been so crazy to see. They just knocking. They're they're doing what Nameless that what. You know, Zero Mechanics Frost's team composition is supposed to do what Nameless Umbra's team composition is doing right now. And, you know, they didn't get the early lead that they wanted. The Ezreal Karma Lane being played for there by the Gragas earlier. Uh, really good plays from the bot lane itself. You get a bunch of trade back kills. Now 5 and 4 is the Ezreal. And they're going to get started up on this Baron. I feel like that's definitely a play you want to get. No vision on the river for... Zero Mechanics Roster, they have one ward there near the blue uh, pit, but that's not really gonna give you anything. The Baron's gonna get taken here for Nameless Umbra, and unfortunately, this lead is only gonna get stronger. It's almost it's a 10,000 gold lead now, almost 11,000 basically. This game is Nameless Umbra's game to win, and uh, I don't, I'm not really sure if Zero Mechanics Frost can buy themselves back into the game. I'm not, I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm just waiting to see this top wave go down. Gangplank's gonna crit it all, and then it's just gone within half a second, you know? Okay. No, not even half a second, a tenth of a second. If you see the Baron getting utilized here, one three one set up for Nameless Umbra here. Mid lane, to mid top lane, mid lane, and the bot lane wave here. Gonna get pushed out by Orion as well. Tormented Soul trying to do as much as you can, but you have no range. You can't hit those cannon minions. Finally, here we go. They're able to take it out. for shot Barrage gonna Dang be like so much damage. Oh my god, Orion almost dies there. I was waiting to see the gangplank ult there. Yeah, that would have been. <laughs> I feel like we might have been able to get the kill, you know, with a party cask as well, and maybe some uh, mantra cues from Karma. Unfortunately, not able to find it. The mid lane uh, inhibitor turret gonna get taken down here now. And Zero Mechanics Frost, what can you do? What can you do? There's nothing you can do. You could try to set up an engage here, but the follow-up from the rest of the team probably going to be super strong here. And I, you don't really even have that much to do. We're going to have to see a miracle shockwave here from just the failure. You know, catching out probably both the Gangplank and the Ezreal. As we see the Cannon Barrage getting put out there. Party cast just to make everyone confused. They are going to get this uh, bot lane inhibitor as well. All three inhibitors here getting taken down and uh, Zero Mechanics Frost, they're just getting choked out of this game. And it's just, you know, it's absolute domination from Nameless Umbra here. The Drake going to be spawning here very soon as well, 30 seconds. And that's going to be soul point for Nameless Umbra. I don't know what uh, I don't know what Zero Mechanics Frost can do at this point. 29 minutes into the game, the kills are only five apart, but gold is 12,000 apart. Oh my god, man, that is you know. Uh, I'm running out of adjectives to use here because there really there's no word that can describe the amount of domination that. Uh, Nameless Umbra has over this game. That bot lane and the top lane, mm, you know, Catherine yeah, barely I... did anything this game, and they're still winning. Well, Catherine just didn't die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, that's true. That is true. Catherine did not just die, and uh, you know who is the though? Rudy Morgana getting caught out here. Got he got the Lee Sin syndrome, except this time he got it for the Dark Binding. You know, he landed the Dark Binding and was like, "Let's get this kill, guys!" But uh, there's no follow up because everybody else is there. So, yeah, I think uh, I think that's about all it for this one. The game lasted to 30 minutes, but I'm willing to call this game a little bit of a shellacking here from Nameless Umbra because everything has just been amazing. Body slam flash into the Oriana, but the CC chain is not there. Has to flash away. The Oriana part of the cask as well. Cassidy in the front line has to go golden. The Crescent Guard keeping his jungler alive. Zinjao alive, rather. Body slam into the Gnar, though. Mega Gnar gonna get popped here. Let's see if he's able to find it. It's a massive shockwave. Two people following up with the Gnar, but... The walls are too big, there's absolutely no damage from Zero Mechanics Frost, and nobody is dead. Rudy's gonna revive, only to see the rest of his team die. 
as his base is getting demolished. Riftwalk into the fountain, not even going to die. 30 minutes into the game, Nameless Umbra absolutely demolish Zero Mechanics Frost with what was supposed to be a scaling composition. However, they were not. Wanted and, uh, you know, name we are going to be heading into a short break afterwards, that, though, to get the next game set up. Uh, we're going to see you then.
Hello everyone, welcome back to game number two of Zero Mechanics Frost versus Nameless Umdra. Game number one was kind of a little bit of a stomp, not gonna lie. There was not much that Zero Mechanics Frost really kind of did, and uh, it was kind of depressing to see them just get absolutely gobstomped by Team Nameless. Uh, let's see if... Uh, let's see if... Uh, the Zero Mechanics Frost are able to bounce back here, as we see in the draft. We have, is that a team injury? As we see, uh, Renata Noola Sejuani banned here, as well as Gangplank. The Gangplank respect here from Zero Mechanics Frost. Taking that away from the top lane, Namor's Umbra. Now Namor's Umbra are going to be picking up the Gnar in response. A Senatom Kench here for the bot lane of Zero Mechanics Frost. Very, uh, very similar to the lane that they had previously. Very, uh sort of uh, very passive here, but speaking of, uh, but I don't think uh, Tristana Rel really is that passive because uh, very strong, very strong here. Looks like the bot lane of uh, Nameless here to dominate once again, just like last game with the Ezreal Karma, instead of going to be picking up Tristana Rel, a pretty good duo here. You know, both the, both champions just kind of want to jump into you, but Zero Mechanics Frost, they're opting into scaling as well. They're, again, they're going to pick the Ornn here. And uh, this is really another game of just scaling, scaling, scaling. And this time, we'll have to see if they're able to fulfill to that. Because last game... Uh, well, no, actually, last game, it was scaling from uh, Nameless that got them to... It was Nameless's team composition that was scaling. And Zero Mechanics Frost team composition was supposed to get a tempo lead. But it looks like they're switching the gears up here. With the Tristana Rel here, Nameless are going to want to demolish this lane and snowball through that power. Meanwhile, Zero Mechanics Frost are opting into scaling with the Zinatom Kench and the Norn as well. Second round of Bans are going to get picked up. The Trundle here and a Kasadin followed up with a Seraphine and an Ari. Okay, these are pretty good power picks. The uh, Kasadin, the Kasadin ban, a little bit of respect because we did see that last game. As so we see a Warwick. In the jungle, I'm assuming, for Zero Mechanics Frost. That's wow, this is a really beefy composition for Zero Mechanics Frost. What I want to see them now is a an, an Azir or maybe a Corky, you know, a really big damage threat in the back line. Because the Senna, the Senna is pretty good, deals a lot of damage, but not as much as you want as something as like a Jinx or or maybe uh, as a Varus. Ooh, Lilia. But, uh, we'll I... have to see. Yeah, the Lilia. Gonna get I... picked up here for. Uh, Nameless. I, lo I love seeing a high mobility uh, jungler and get around. So this is this might be fun. Especially against uh, Warwick. You know, both junglers are pretty high mobility with the passive of the W from Warwick and Lilia's passive as well. Going to be very interesting to see. I don't know if Lilia is like some sort of uh, counter to Warwick. Maybe it is. As we see the Silas getting picked up here. I do respect the Cyrus because you know that's you're you're picking it away from Zero Mechanics Frost, but also I feel like you don't really want to pick Silas here for Zero Mechanics. You already have scaling. You already have a, a really beefy front line. I I really just wanted I really just want to see an Azir, a Quirky, maybe maybe uh, something along the lines of a Victor. You know, a really strong backline. Vex is mm. pretty good. That is a pretty good because you know it's counter dive, and that's exactly what Nameless wants to do to you. So the Vex here, you're going to get picked up for the mid laner of Zero Mechanics Frost, and I really, really love it, because that throws, that throws such a massive wrench in the gears of uh, no Mechanics here, of uh, Nameless, rather. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how that works out. I mean, this just gives Silas three good ults to take, and the Vex that actually... Will, but the Vex could actually make it very problematic if he takes the Warwick ult, so the fear stops as the Warwick ult, so... We'll see how that works yeah. out. We're gonna have to see how it works out. I really, really love the Vex pick. You know, it's just, it's so good. Counter dive. It's like, it's like picking a Poppy into a Lee Sin or a Wukong, you know? It just, it just mitigates so much of what the enemy team wants to do. And that's gonna be really good with the personal space there from Vex. Gonna be dealing a lot of fears there. And uh, I'm really excited to see because last game from Zero Mechanics Frost, the only player that was actually kind of good for them was the Orianna. We saw Xin Zhao try to make plays. And we saw him, you know, do a lot for his team in terms of, like, uh, lane priority and helping them out, you know, save their lanes. But also, beyond that, there was nothing else he did. So, I'm interested to see, because Orianna did really, really well the entire game, uh, pretty much. He died one time, and that was in the final team fight. Could be very interested to see 
uh, how he performs on the Vex here. Uh, I'm really excited, honestly, for the Vex. I really am. <laughs> you see the uh, bands here. You're getting picked up here. I mean, oh, I... Lilia. we haven't seen a lot of Lilia. Lilia got path. Lilia got buffed in 12.14, didn't she? I honestly, I haven't kept up with that. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain she did. It's either this, it's either 12.14 or the next patch. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, Lilia kind of rising up here. I, uh, I haven't seen Lilia at all since like 2020, so I'm gonna be, I mean, gonna be really excited. I'm, I'm kind of excited to see the Silas, see w which alt he uses and and how. So what I'm thinking, he's probably gonna end up using the Vex alt and then ro uh, roam down bot side or roam top, whoever's out oh, in position. Yeah, That's gonna be like some of the best. Um, and then just be able to steal the Warwick. Just either one, either one is gonna give him a great engage. So late game, I'm thinking he's gonna try to focus more on the Orn or the Senna alt. Is my perspective on what he's gonna do. Wait. With that first stunner rel bot lane here, the stealing the Vexalt early and getting some rounds down there with the unexpected like dash from a million miles away, that's definitely gonna be amazing there for the Silas getting some really early leads. We're gonna have to see Nameless Omba try to do what uh Zero Mechanics Frost wanted to do last game. If they're able to get a tempo, get a lead, get all their lanes going, moving, everything set up, it's gonna be very, very amazing for them. And they're gonna be uh, the game is gonna be their uh, game to win. It's going to be there in their control. We're going to have to see if Zero Mechanics Frost are able to stabilize the game and if they're able to sort of uh, if they're able to stick it throughout. They're able to survive through the early game and the mid game. If they're able to get through that early game with the Senna, with the Or, and the ornaments going to be coming in. Then going to be very excited to see. What are you What are you thinking? Who Who Who's the draft you like the most? Asset. I mean, personally, I like. I'm, I'm waiting for the second dragon fight. I think that's gonna be probably the best, the best uh, play of the game. It's just right when everyone is just gonna be able to rotate down there, and if they mess up, that can stream roll it. Tristana just yeah, can shred cool. towers. I've seen, I've seen Zero Sixty's Tristana. He knows how to shred the towers, and if oh, he yeah. gets past the second Drake, then you know if they leave him alone, he's just gonna shred all the towers. I've seen it before. Oh, yeah. And and uh, zero mechanics don't really have a decent uh, side laner here to answer the. Uh, no, they have the Orn, they have the Vex, which I suppose not that bad. But if you put Tristan a side lane there with the power of the Rel and the Lily as well, like you said, she is just gonna tear through those uh, towers, and that could possibly be one of the win conditions for uh, what, Team Nameless here. I just don't really see much for their for them to even answer the Tristana. I mean, yeah, you have the Warwick. But the Tristana alting and then jumping away, uh, yeah, just yeah. The range, the range, uh, the transparency here is really gonna be uh, gonna be quite the hassle here for Orn for the Warwick for the Tom Kench. But as we load in here into the spectator delay, we got we are gonna be jumping straight into a break, waiting for that spectator delay to end. As we jump into that, be sure to stay in the call. Be sure to stay right where you are. We'll see you then.
Hello everyone, welcome back to game two of Team Nameless, Nameless Umbra versus uh, Zero Mechanics Plus. Nameless Umbra taking the first game earlier in an absolute shocking, basically. The game lasted 30 minutes, but it felt like it was in their control the entire game. And we're going to be jumping here into the second game. Roles have been kind of reversed. Now it's Team Name. now it's Nameless Umbra that want to get a tempo lead. Now it's Nameless Umbra that wants to get that power in the mid game. They want to get that snowball going against the scaling composition that uh, Zero Mechanics Frost has drafted for themselves. And uh, uh, I talked to you, I said this earlier, <laughs> Grasp on Rel. <laughs> I wanted to speak about that because that's something that we don't really see. I, uh, I Usually people go Aftershock or a Glacial Augment. I would have definitely much preferred the Glacial Augment here. But it went for the grasp, which I, I don't know if that's, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't know. Although this is kind of cheeky, though. <laughs> oh, put down a ward. Now they know where uh, where we're going to be going there. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm enjoying the little Silas dance. Silas dance. <laughs> yeah, Silas dance is pretty good. Silas dance is pretty funny, not going to lie. As we do see opposite sides of the map here starting up both teams here leashing for the jungler looks like Lilia is going to be playing here for the bot lane which is kind of what we want to see you know it's just on our well they want to get through that lane and they want to absolutely demolish it and the Senatom catch not exactly the uh best lane to do it because of how defensive and survivable they are but without that devour and you know if uh, Tristana is able to get the power the power that she normally does gonna have to see if uh the bot lane of zero mechanics frost are able to get through the power of Trisana and Rel, as we see another bug here, the same bug. CS is still zero, Riot, please fix replay bug. Oh, but yeah. we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, we're seeing a lot of pretty good trades here from Blah Blah, as we see actually. There goes the CS numbers. There we go. Yes. <laughs> this is farming. Hey, this hey. is farming Senna, which is the the, the usual oh. consensus that people go to. On the bright side, we don't have to deal with the black screen anymore. They fixed one uh, thing. Yeah, oh yeah, they fixed that. <laughs> that was really annoying. I was there for that, and my god. I see some pretty good trading here by Papa Skip, Balo's Breath, the wall up there. Pretty nice trades. We see both junglers now, opposite side of the mm. map again. But this is kind of not really a gankable lane, you know? Uh, Tristana and well, Tristana pretty much just always shoves the lane in no matter what because of the passive of the E. So really, it's not going out too good for uh, Lilia in the bot lane of Nameless Umbra. Then again, Warwick also doesn't really have any gankable lanes and it's not like she's going to be able mm. to steal any of the farm that Lilia has because Lilia took all of that. He's going to put a ward there. I was a little curious why the Warwick didn't invade when we, you know, because unfortunately they knew where he was at so he could have gone the long way and made it look like he was going deeper into his own jungle and yeah. counter jungle that's what i thought he was gonna do you they know do they do have the priority in the mid lane as well but the bot lane priority tristana and Rel probably gonna be able to follow up a lot quicker than senator tom can show maybe he just didn't want to risk it and uh, we'll never know until we ask him, but uh, so far, you know, both sides of the jungle are just kind of getting traded up here by both junglers. They got vision on... already taking their Warwick there. They got vision on Lilia, so they know exactly where Lilia is. Know. There's a crash down onto to blah, 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 has to flash away the explosive charge. Not enough damage to keep him on death, but he's going to be jumping forward as well with the rocket jump, but he's not able to find anything. No more sums there on that Senna, very vulnerable, and all the uh, Nameless Umbra bot lane had to use was an Ignite. Were we taking and the Blast Cone over? Anything. Uh, yeah, it's an uh, Warwick trying to look for something to engage, but the entirety of the river is uh, scattered here with vision, and Blob Blob, you're playing a dangerous game, my man. We're going to be flashing forward with the W knockup. That's first blood over to the Drishana, the one thing that you do not want to see at all, thick skin. Gonna be used here and gonna be saving the Tom Kench a little bit. Warwick a little bit too late to the fight. As we see a lot of damage oh. onto the Orion has to flash away. Is the Nar, but Papa skips. Not able to get the brittle auto attack. Flashes way too late and uh, Nar gonna be keeping himself alive a little bit longer. That was a beautiful play there from the bot lane. I don't know if you know, but I am the biggest Tristana main. Tristana is the first champion that I ever played in League of Legends, and she's the one that I have the most mastery on, and I absolutely love it when Tristana lanes uh, pop up, because that's what you're supposed to do with Tristana. Tristana 
It's not a hyper carry. Just just not as like not like a late game hyper carry like Jinx, like Senna. She's not like a uh, utility AD carry like the Ezreal, like the Jin. Tristana is all about demolishing the lane and making sure that the enemy AD carry is not a champion. And, you know, getting first blood is a really huge help for that. Unfortunately, he hasn't recalled just that because it looks like the wave is uh, not really... I mean, the lane's pretty good for them. We can set up a freeze here, but a free... freeze on Tristana is practically impossible because of the passive on the E. I kind of want them to just shove this wave out, use the abilities on the wave, make sure it's out of here, and then get that uh, reset so that you can get your... Uh lead that you rightfully so earned because blah blah kind of kind of into there a little bit moving way too far forward knowing very well that rel had flash and who did tristana so kind of just let himself get caught there not really what you want to do against a really strong lane like tristana rel they are getting a little bit of a lead here double long for the for their senna he was able to get a reset before the tristana did so uh It'll be interesting to see. The Drake is up, and we see Warwick going over there with the prio they have in the Oh, lane. he's probably halfway done. Let's see. Yeah, he's yeah, more there, than yeah. half. <laughs> Name the Sombra, kind of not really doing anything about it. I mean, it's not like they can, you know. Lilia only just got here, now moving back, realizing that Warwick just got the Drake. They should have just pushed the wave in and just immediately went back into lane, you know, used the abilities and everything. Get that lead, because now you got the first blood, but that first blood isn't really doing you much of anything. If you had recalled, you may have gone the pickaxe, maybe, you know, a couple long swords. But I'm assuming maybe he's just waiting to get until he has a uh, Moon Quiver. Here's a Hex Flash into the uh, bush mm. there. But Lily did Lily show. She moved uh, before Lily the bit. Show. Why she... aren't they just recalling? Tri what? Hold on. Name the Umbra. What? There we go. Use the, uses the explosive charge on the cannon minion to push that wave out. Now, this is a very massive wave. They're going to be crashing into the tower. They're going to get a reset. going to get that first blood gold and all the CS that they have. It's going to be very, very fun. The thing that confuses me, I've met a lot of Tristana players. A lot of them do not properly use their reset. Yeah. Wait, resets on the W or resets on, like, recall? On her jump. On her jump, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of them don't realize if you use the bomb and fully charge it, blow it up, you get another jump. Yeah, no, yeah, no, that's like a... Tristan is a very simple champion, doesn't really have that much mechanics, but one is that is no. one of the mechanical uh, plays that she has, and earlier, we didn't really get to see that. Uh, Tristana did jump in, and then cast the E, and then did it again, but also his reset wasn't exactly the thing that wasn't exactly like something you should be proud of. I don't know, we'll have to see a better performance there. They're able to get a pickaxe and a noon quiver off the reset here for Tristana, and that is absolutely massive. Especially against such a squishy uh, AD carry like the Senna. If I don't see if I don't see Tristana absolutely demolish this lane, I'm gonna be very disappointed if I'm being completely honest. Because this is a lane that you should just absolutely gobstomp no matter what. And uh, as you can see here, the uh, turret destructor Tristana here putting an explosive mm. charge there, almost getting that Fail. first plate for free. Or a couple waves should be able to get that as well. We haven't really talked about this mid lane a lot. Vex versus the Silas. Vex usually should have a very good laning phase here, but the Silas is putting up a lot of pressure up in CS right now, actually. He's gonna get a reset here, probably gonna get the lost chapter there, assuming he goes Everfrost. Very, very fun. Let's see if he's able to get it, is he? Does he have enough gold? No, he went for the Lucidity Boots. Alright. Oh, oh there's beautiful! A crush down with the magnet storm onto the Senna. Oh, the, the shield! Darkness actually, so much shield, so much healing. Here comes a re-engage with the dawning shadow, the abyssal dive, not able to land because the flash is there for Tristana. And that was a beautiful defensive play from the bot lane of uh, Zero Mechanics Frost. There's another crash down. Incoming That's Vex. That's really what you want to see because the Vex is here to roam Shadow Surge. Not going to be landing onto anyone, just going in between the two. But the fear is here, looming darkness. It's going to be the end of the world for the Rel. Trying to trade it back It's the Tristana. Oh my god. You know what I wanted the Tristana to do? I wanted the Tristana to just jump in on Senna there, get a reset, and then just help out. And then just kill the Vex with the help of the Lilia. But unfortunately, probably didn't feel as comfortable as he would have. And uh, ends up being a 0 for 1 trade for 0 mechanics. You know, Rail started it up. It was a pretty good engage catching both the Senna and the Tom Kench. But the Devourer was there. All the shields, all the healing. Didn't even have to use Flash with the Senna. 
and uh, ends up being a down trade for the Tristan or Rel bot lane. Not really what you want to see at all. It was kind of it was kind of fa kind of painful seeing the ult miss, but you know if they would have had the the Rel engage, it would have secured it. You know, you know what I would have wanted to see from Tristana other than the Halo Blades? The Halo Blades is good, right? It's pretty okay. But uh, with the fact that, you know, you have the healing from the Persic Darkness, the Devour Shield, Exhaust from Senna as well, and all that kind of stuff, Senna and Tom Kench have a lot of survivability, and really the Halo Blades is only going to do you so much. I would have preferred to see a PTA a lot more than the Halo Blades, if I'm being completely honest. Because mm. with the Senna and the Tom Kench, that's just a guarantee that fights are going to be a lot longer. Without the Lilia, you're not bursting that Senna down, you know? And if Tom Kench is there with the, with the Devour, you're not going to be bursting down the Tom Kench either. So I, I really would have preferred to see PTA for really a lot longer fights. You could still dive, and you could still like, oh, we see a flasher in the top lane. You could see it, you could still dive, and you could still rocket jump into their faces. But also, it just helps you out so much with the longer fights and everything, that kind of stuff, as we see. And engage here onto the Senna. The Devourer gonna get used up as well. Silas is here. Tristana still roaming up. The Drake is now up. Second Drake of the game. Gonna see if they're gonna be fighting for this. Zero Mechanics Cross set up in the river, top side of it. Now, uh, Nameless Umbra in the bottom side. <laughs> it's a wraparound there. I think they're trying to flank the Lilia, but they're not able to find it. Now, the Drake is gonna get started up here from Nameless Umbra. Let's see if they're able to take it away. Do we think lots of war, lots of vision. Everybody is seen here. Warwick's trying to look for something. Little thing lullaby that he was able to find it. Remember, no engage from Rel anymore. It's going to be all up to you, Silas. It's all going to be up to you, Lydia. Let's see if they're able to get the Drake. Let's see. A little bit of trade here in the top lane. That shadow surge onto the Lilia. Here comes the mid laner, just the along with the Dawn of Shadow, infinite the rest onto the Lilia. There he finally goes, dies from the piercing darkness. But Tristan is still alive. The Drake is gonna get taken down here by the Warwick. That's two Drakes now for them as the fight disappears there, this arrays there. But it was actually the Senna that wins out with a double kill. Uh, Zero Mechanics Frost here winning out that fight. The nice dodge onto the Abduct there, but. Still, you know, a lot of damage here from the Dristana, you have to respect it, Cole. The Forge got low trading here in the top lane, like I said, this game is staying very volatile. Let's see if he's able to take it. Yes, he is! Oh, man, Orion. And I feel like he kind of inted by moving down. He probably should have just kept moving to the left, but still gets killed there. And Papa Skips is uh, buying himself back after that first game, you know? Nara's just not having a fun time. But the good thing about the good thing about that fight, I mean, this, I mean, not only did they win the team fight, but they also got the second Drake. That's gonna give them, uh, it's gonna get them really closer to this next Drake. Uh, what rift did we get actually? Uh, we got a. Uh, it's an uh, ocean. An, an ocean. It's an ocean. ocean. So this is gonna be really great for Tom Kench. Yeah, this is really really great for zero mechanics frost here they're now two drakes away from that ocean soul if they're able to get that that's going to be absolutely massive for the steam composition and for their fights so uh just getting that second drake and the team fight win absolutely massive you know this is not a gob song from nameless umbra anymore i'm really happy to see zero mechanics frost getting themselves back into the game nars is just playing the games with the orn up there <laughs> Playtime's yeah, over. Trading here, yeah. Ulti onto the Orn here. That's a lot of damage. Brittle proc as well. Here's the bowling ball. Is it able to land? No, it's okay, not. she's got this. But it's still going to be flashing forward with the W, with the E. E, watch out, but you are dead. Here comes a follow up re engage from Vex out of nowhere. Warwick. Actually, able to find that kill in the bot lane now. A little bit of an engage onto the Senna here. So much shielding, Jesus Christ. That's not what you want to see at all. Flashing forward still is the uh, Rel here looking for something onto the Senna here. Flash forward from the Tristana, but the Tongue Lash Stun keeps himself alive. Dawning Shadow over the team fight. Lots of shielding, lots of damage. Rel is gonna go down, but the Buster Shot is gonna get that trade back onto the Senna. Shut down now. Let's see who wins this 1v1. ADC versus support. Actually, Senna should be the support. But it looks like Tristana is winning out on this one. Here comes a TP. It's not even needed because Tom can just so much damage. Rocket jump into the face of the catfish. That's not what you want at all. And it ends up being a two for one for the side of zero mechanics. I didn't feel a need to correct you earlier when you, <laughs> you even said at the beginning of the game, passing Senna. 
And then later you called somebody you care. You're like, yeah, all right, let's go. <laughs> I just, it's, it's very confusing, man. Very confusing. <laughs> but this this Tristana real bot lane is not working out so so good for uh, uh, Nameless Umbra. They got that first blood, which is absolutely instrumental in getting their lead. But so far, they're just kind of not really doing much, as we see. A little bit of an engagement. Oh, yeah. Melting Lullaby is going to get followed up. Eve, watch out. 247 damage. Call up the Forge God with the Bellows Breath. That's not going to save you. This time, it's a mm -hmm. double knockup. It's very tanky, but Fatalan is going to get that kill, and Orn just get, got caught out. Overextended. Seeing the roll there, and I was like, no, he's not going to get away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, you know. Rel does, Rel does a... Very good at giving you a lot of CC. But that is going to give uh, Tristana a lot of uh, control here in the bot lane. It looks like he's going to be able to get that first tower here. As you said earlier, Tristana, Turret Demolisher, you know, they're going to be swapping out here into the mid lane now, it appears. Then they're going to be trying to look for that mid lane turret now. But the Herald is going to get taken here from uh, uh, Zero Mechanics. That's the second Herald. I don't know. I'm not actually sure who got the first one. I don't think anyone fought for it. Did the new Herald and, uh, uh, buff come through? Is I'm it in yet? Not sure. I believe that's in 12.15. I believe that's Okay. In. But, yeah, they are going to pick up the second Herald now. Drake is going to be spawning in 30, 30 seconds. They could use that second Herald, uh, put that in mid lane, you know, get some priority there, and then move into the river to get that soul point for zero mechanics. This is absolutely instrumental teleport. <laughs> Getting used here by Vex to get that priority in the mid lane. And Nara isn't even here. I don't know if his teleport is going to be up in time. Papa Skips also does not have teleport, so it looks like it's going to be a 4v4 team fight unless Orion decides to TP. We're going to have to see here. It's a pretty close game. It's only a 1,000 gold lead for zero mechanics as we see some trading there. Vision already getting set up in the river in the bot side. We're going to have to see the Drake is going to get started up here. And Nameless Umbra, you have to get this. If you just give away the soul point, that's so much. So much stuff giving away. Here comes the TP from t uh, Orion. It's gonna be a five v four. The choke point is here. Oh it's yes. Also to the Warwick Devourer. It's gonna save him as well though. But it's a massive engage from the realm. Crash down Magnet Storm into the backline. Tristan is getting caught out though. The Vex is already dead. Dome Shadow not really doing much. Rel with the massive engage, gonna get a double kill here for his mid laner. Gonna get followed up with a triple for the Tom Catch. It's catfish for dinner tonight. Triple for the Silas. Four people from name from uh, Zero Mechanics Frost. Amazing gone. goal return. <laughs> oh, an amazing goal return. This is exactly what their team composition needed to get back into this game, and they absolutely won. And I think that was off the back of uh, Papa Skips using that teleport earlier in the fight between Tristana and Tom Kench. He used that teleport, which means he does not have teleport now. So the fight ended up being a five v four in favor of Nameless uh, Umbra, and that was just kind of uh, not really a fight that you won. I feel like I feel like with the Teleport Disparency, you could have just given the uh, Ocean Drake away without losing any kills, but uh, Zero Mechanics Frost here got greedy. They wanted the Drake and they wanted the Soul Point when they could have just given it away, and unfortunately they paid for it. Now the gold lead is still the gold lead's still pretty close. It's still one thousand gold lead, but this but this time it's over to the side of uh, uh, nameless Umbra, and uh, yeah, they really brought themselves back into this game. I feel. Side us now, going to be very very strong. Why are we going to be putting down the uh, herald here in the bot lane? It does look like it's going to take it out as we see a pause here. Uh oh. Pause. No. I don't know what happened. I think it might have been the Rift Herald, but I don't really know. Some that's not like I didn't see anything wrong happen with the Rift Herald. Did somebody leave me perhaps? Ah, uh, people um, do have internet problems though. So. Uh, in oh people are people are having internet problems. It's not looking good. I mean that was just my quick my first thought. But nobody left the game, so maybe maybe it's like uh, maybe it's just an internal issue, maybe like peripherals or like somebody had to go to the bathroom, something like that. So well, honest, honestly, I'm, I'm waiting to see what's going to happen because honest, when we were doing the champion slay, I was thinking, all right, you know, the silence. If he takes Warwick all, it's great for a fight, and then 
we now have the Tom Kench coming in play who actually stopped it in mid in mid uh, Warwick yeah. Alt. So now he has the fear and he's got the Tom Kench that will stop it. Yeah, Devour did uh, cancel the infinite duress that uh, Silas hijacked, but he did it so late. It was like the he did it at like uh, like there we oh, go. Yeah, okay, Narla, yeah. So having some internet issues there. But on your uh, on your uh, point there, Devour was used, but it was used very very late. And if they want to cancel out that infinite duress, saving whoever gets caught. They need uh Rudy needs to use that devour as soon as the infinite the rest lands because I saw that and it was at and uh you know Cyrus was attacking the Warwick for a long time dealt a lot of damage that's why Warwick died immediately because the devour was not there quick enough I mean the devour was there but after he got spit out he just died immediately because it's just too late the damage had already been dealt and the devour is basically used you probably could have used that onto somebody else. But uh, really unfortunate play there from Rudy. I'm I'm really hoping to see for the next fight. I'm hoping to see that we use uh, Sats will steal the Orn, the Orn or the Senna. Both of them will be yeah, really great for the next team both fights. If As he... the game goes on, Silas's ulti cooldown is gonna get really really low. So uh, there's a possibility that he could use two ulties in a team fight we could get both the dawning shadow and the call of the forge god that's gonna be really really instrumental for them because as the game goes on the games could get harder for nameless umbra here so they're gonna have to step it up a little bit but off the back of that team fight win i think this game is now steadily in their control it looks like they are gonna cancel no no they're not i don't think they're gonna be able to cancel this herald drop so that turret probably gonna go down but they do have the gold lead now. It's only a 1,000 gold lead, but it still is a gold lead. And they have the tempo-based comp, you know? They have the snowball comp, and if they're able to get the leads, get the picks, get the kills, get the turrets with the Tower Destroyer Tristana that they have, uh, this game should be in their hands. We'll have to see as the pause is still going. <laughs> well, Silas so getting back to lane with the 3-0, and so... He just picked up three kills. That's a lot of gold. Yeah, it's so. seven Stark on Dark Seal. Mm. Is a uh, Dark Seal is an incredibly uh, gold efficient item, you know. Let's see, game still pause, even though it said that Orion was already here. Maybe they're just. Making sure that things don't happen again anymore. I mean, it's fairly, it's fairly even. Who do you think is is currently going to be pushing the lead? Oh, What's your it's thoughts on why? It's, it's no, no. definitely Nameless. You think Nameless? Okay. Yeah, because they just won the team fight. They got a tumble lead all that. And as you said, you know, Cyrus is going to be really, really strong right now. He has seven sarks in the dark seal as a stopwatch. And, you know, scrappy team fights, that's going to be really, really good for the Tristana, for the Silas, and their Rel. I, I can... And, you know, this game is now just in their control. It's up to them to make a tempo. It's up to them to make mm -hmm. a snowball and keep making sure and keep pushing their lead. Because they don't want to scale against an Orn. They don't want to scale against a Senna. They don't want to do that. And I'm, I'm actually ruined. I'm seeing 060, the placements. His positioning has always typically been really good from all the, all the games I've been watching on that. So I think as soon as he gets the opportunity, he's going to be burning down the top tower. Oh, yeah. I think Once those towers start going down, this game is well but over. Plus, I think for the next uh, the next good fight we're gonna have, I'm thinking the Silas is gonna try to steal the uh, the Vex alt, and then if he gets in a bad situation, he's just ready to hourglass until his cooldowns come back. Yeah, pretty so, much. So, I it just. Silas has that great, you know, life still, and if he gets in a bad situation, just as long as he doesn't have to deal with the a uh, a Tom catch, you know, other than that he should be fine. Anyone else he fights, he should be fine. Honestly, the ulti on the Tom catch isn't even that bad. He could use it on uh, a person that's getting called out since she he's gonna be in the front line, you know, diving in with somebody like a Nar, like a Lilia. If the Nar ever gets really low or the Rel, he could just gobble him up and then keep him safe. No, no, I, I, I was just saying as long as the, the Tom Kench isn't there. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. The Tom, the, yeah, the Tom Kench is absolutely instrumental here for uh, Zero Mechanics team composition. Because I the Devour is absolutely amazing. 
I honestly haven't seen very much from him. I like I'm expecting better engagements from him, and you know I'm expecting to see like an Orn Alt and Tom Kench, you know, dive to basically throw them off kilter. So as soon as he, you know, but I had not really seen it. Yeah, the, rel, so. the rel's been on her game, you know. Yeah, the rel has been making some quality engages. This is what uh, this is the this is my honestly my favorite bot lane, Tristana rel. <laughs> I not only am I a Tristana main, I rel is my most played support because she's the funnest support in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And that like just diving in, it's honestly rel's engage is one of the easiest to do. Because unlike unlike somebody like Leona or Nautilus, you have to land your E, your like your skill shot. As well, all you have to do is just get yourself in them. You know, you just, mm -hmm. you just and we're just, back. You you flash forward and you you need to be in the middle of everyone, and that's how you engage as well. And it's it's not that difficult to do that, honestly. Oh no, we are gonna see there's the engage here. The Warwick is <laughs> out. Ooh, following the rocket jump. The infinite, the rest gonna get landed out there. It's cancelled. By the uh -oh. magnet storm, as my screen is frozen, we yeah. see teleport from Silas here. Oh, game is having issues. Suspense has to weigh as we see the pause here. This is a really bad play here as we see a follow up there. The teleport. Okay, there we go. Papa skips as well. Crash down onto the two. Senna is already here. It's a 3v4, but the Tom Kench is so low. Has to go golden. It's the Silas, the Rel. Very, very tanky. Call of the Forge Gods. It's a triple knockup. From Papa Skips, Dawning Shadow over the fight as well. Call of the Forge is going to be landing onto the Warwick here. It's a 5v3 now in the bot lane. No oh. other follow up. The sacrificial land is going to be rel. He's going to be diving forward. Tristana has to flash away. I don't know if they really want to engage for that. It ends up being a one for nothing. But all five members of Zero Mechanics have to go here. And just look at Narn in the top lane. He's getting a he's getting a free turret there. Lydia is going to be getting the crugs as well. And I mean, you'll take the kill, right? But just look at the other side of the map. Okay, it looks like Zero Mechanics are going to push the issue and they are going to be trying to get this uh, uh, Tier 2 turret, which is going to make this trade even more so worth it. But that yeah. ended up being a one for nothing for the side of Zero Mechanics. And I, I mean, I kind of like it. They set up the play. Warwick stayed in the uh, tower. I mean, in the ward and, you know... To be fair, they can't defend it. They could not defend that against all five. <laughs> yeah, you know, Silas, Tristana, and... Maybe if you get a bunch of resets, you know, if you get a bunch of resets, mayhaps. But unfortunately, that was not the case. I feel like I feel like Rel did not have to reengage uh, down, and yeah, I feel like he didn't have to give his life away. He could have just crashed down the way, and then you know, like it would have been all been fine. But uh, you know, that was the uh, series of events that happened, and Rel ends up dying for it. The state of the game oh. here, Baron is up. No vision. Are they gonna start up the Baron? I don't think they have the damage to do so. Senna not really have, don't really give that much DPS here. As uh, Drake is gonna be spawning in two minutes. It looks like Warwick here is setting up some vision for that. Meanwhile, the bot lane of Zero Mechanics setting up some vision in Baron. Now, uh, Zero Mechanics shouldn't be able to steal the Baron away, but you know who can? Definitely Nameless because of that Tristana damage, the mm -hmm. DPS from the Lilia as well. If they're if they're if they're able to sneak it away, I'm certain they will be able to do that. That's why uh, the bot lane. That's why Zero Mechanics has to you know uh, respect it, and they put two control wards there in the Baron as they uh, as we're a minute into the Drake here. Well, it's pretty smart though. Tristana backing away. No vision on anyone. No, <laughs> she'll yeah. need to push. Yeah, exactly. There's some pretty good uh, Tristana gameplay. I like the uh, I like the uh, last whisper build. Because, you know, Warwick, Orin, you already have the uh, Kraken Slayer, but having a Lord Dominic is also very good. You see, a minute till this Ocean Drake spawns. This is going to be absolutely amazing for Zero Mechanics if they're able to pick it up. Because that means it's going to be Ocean's, Ocean Point now, Ocean Soul Point for them, which is going to be absolutely uh, good for the team composition for the elongated fights with the Senna, with the Tom Kench. We see some trading here in the bot lane. Orion not get caught out before the Drake is. Oh God! Here. Blah blah is here. Lilius been moving up. They have no vision of the river whatsoever. They have one ward in the pit, but I don't really think this is a fight you want to take. The Nara flash away from the Lilia. Orion has flash away as well. Dawning Shadow not able to find it. Actually, uh, the uh, uh, root 
I'm losing my word. The root from the Senanari will find it actually, and the knockup as well from Papa Skips. Now the re-engage, here comes the call of the Forge God from Papa Skips. Shadow Short's not gonna be landing onto anyone. The Justana is just jumping forward and he's dead! What was that? The Wombo combo is gonna be jumping in. Some massive relegate oh. from the support, but the Tristana is dead. You don't have any damage. What the hell was that from Tristana? <laughs> he jumped into the front line. When you shouldn't mm. be doing, you're the damage! You're the damage! You shouldn't be doing that! <laughs> no, right in the midst of all of them. Just... He jumped in, rocket jump, get feared immediately, knocked up, and you're just gone from the team fight. <laughs> I don't know what he was trying to do there. <laughs> you know? Well, if, I feel like if he rocket jumped into the pit, it would have given him an angle to attack the Vex without getting feared, but instead he jumped in front of him, in the in front of Vex, and in the middle of like four people from Zero Mechanics. I just, I can't get over this play, man. It's like, I've done that play before. I've been in that position where I've done that before. And I can tell you, it does not feel good when you lose a team fight like that. I, I, I just... we're, we're all lost for words on that. <laughs> we're all lost for words on that. You know that gives me that gives me some uh, silver mid lane from perks in uh, 2016. I, I don't know what was I that think, about. I'm thinking that Tristan just thought that she had the the same advantage she had the previous game. That's just not the case here. You know you can't be doing mistakes like that, and because of that, nameless. Uh, I mean zero mechanics are able to get the ocean soul point, and one more Drake, they're gonna get the ocean soul, which is absolutely instrumental. As we see a bot lane here, the really fast wolf. I'm gonna look for something. Not able to find that and. Just, you know, I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna need to see another miracle come out of the hats that uh, Nameless have here. Just like that first Drake fight. I mean, just like that third Drake fight. We're gonna need a bunch of miracles to get that Drake. The Baron is up now, and we see Silas pushing up there, trying to get that first turret, I think, in the top lane. Oh, it was already taken. My bad. Oh, man. This game, every every second that just happens in this game is a second that is absolutely amazing for uh, uh, Zero Mechanics. Remember, they have a scaling team composition. They have Senna, they have Vec, they have Orn. These are really good scaling uh, oh, no. champions. And even though they have the Tristana, which, you know, okay, with the Kragans are kind of good scaling. Silas as well. I don't know if that's enough to win against a Vex, against a high range uh, Senna. Like. <laughs> Nameless are just gonna have such a difficult time in these later team fights, and I don't know, I don't know how else to phrase it. I just think a big opportunity was just lost that they could have warped to the mid lane. The yeah. Tristana was too pushed up, and even if they didn't get that, it would have been the rel. So they really did Here miss out on the abyssal dive. It is gonna get rocket jumped away. No re-engage from the Lilia lullaby. But still, you know, I love to see the uh, proactiveness. A uh, knockup that's not really going to be landing. Bellows Breath onto the Gnar. Lots of uh, hyper procs there. Lots of damage. We see uh, Gnar having a lot of a better time here in the 1v1 earlier. He got solo killed. That's That was his death. So, uh, really nice to see him bounce himself back into this game. I want to see Tristana's next item. She still, she still has potions. At this point, I'm a little surprised. Phantom is uh, definitely the uh, go-to here. What with the uh, amount of dive that uh, Zero Mechanics has here. Drake's going to be up in a minute 30. This is going to be the most in, uh, important fight of the game because if Zero Mechanics get the Drake, the Ocean Soul, I don't know how else. I don't know how else. Nameless are gonna get back into this game. I don't know what they're gonna have to pull a rabbit out of a hat out of nowhere because if they want to win that team fight, I mean, if they want to win with the enemy team having Ocean Soul, uh, you're gonna mm. need to be Prince or some they're miracles. Right? They're both trying to bait the mid lane. <clears throat> oh, That's, well, there's two fights at the same time. Yeah, two fights at the same time. Lilting Lullaby into the Tom Kench with the. Abyssal Dab will be keeping himself safe as Orion. We see some damage being pulled out there. 
This is really important. You Orion won't have Meganar for the Drake fight, which is happening in 30 seconds. Oh, but this is what we were talking about. The Baron for the Drake. This is uh, Tristana can absolutely melt through that with the rapid fire. I mean, with the uh, yeah, I think that's what uh, his Q is called. The Baron is already dead. The Drake isn't even alive yet. There it goes. And this is absolutely massive from uh, mm. Nameless here, getting that upswing, getting that Baron. Because, Very nice. Uh, yeah, well, it's basically a guarantee that uh, Zero Mechanics are going to get the um, uh, Ocean Soul here. Uh, I, they're, they're not even going to be trying to posture it. But with this Baron, they're able to now make some uh, macro plays. Oh, they are going to be fighting for it. The Death Oh, push. they're trying to bait it. Is, uh, oh, no, Orion, don't walk into it. The Looming Darkness starts up the TC chain, but the Dawning Shadow is way too late. There's not enough damage. The Sun lands with the Tongue Lash. Let's see if uh, Lydia is able to steal it. Where is the jungler? There she is, Patan. You're going to have to flash forward to see if he's able to steal it. No, he's not. Oh, for the side of Warwick now. Rel trying to look for engage. There's a flash. Magnet um. Storm. It's a three-man knockup with a four-man stun. But the follow-up is just not there whatsoever. Let's see if the explosive charge is able to find it. No, it's not. Now the reset's coming through for the Vex. Lots of damage from Orion here, remember. But it's now a 3v5 for the side of Zero Mechanics. And I don't think you're winning this team fight yeah. whatsoever. The infinite, the rest isn't even needed. Isn't even used from Silas. And it looks like they can just end the game here with the spot lane wave. They're at least going to get the inhibitor, I'd say. All right, Tristan's finally backing. Yeah, that was just, uh, you know, it was a 50-50, but unfortunately Lilia, you know, was not there quick enough. The Baron for the Ocean Soul. I don't know if I'd say that's worth or not. It looks like they're trying for a little bit of re-engage here. Q oh, there's... From oh. The oh, but the Guardian proc, I think, is what saved them. The re-engage is there. Tristana has to rocket jump away a little thing. Lullaby onto the front line, but Rel is already dead. Just the failure is going to grab that kill. Tristana has to flash away from the flash forward from Senna. And Lilia is, has to canter away from this team fight that he does not want to take whatsoever, Silas. Posturing for something here, but the uh, root from Senna is going to be... Taken here, and the bottom lane inhibitor could be going there. Man, this, uh, <laughs> both teams that wanted to get, like, uh, the tempo-based composition, that want to get leads, one that snowball, they're just not be really executing on it. Now, the Baron is going to be up in 3 minutes 30 seconds. Elder are going to be spawning in 4 minutes. Gonna be really excited for that one. Team fights oh, are going to be exponentially harder. Free... Nard getting a free oh, tower? Nard, yeah, Nard did get a free uh, tier 2 turret there. That's 600 local gold there. Remember, even though the gold lead stands at uh, 1,000 gold lead, this is a scaling team composition with Senna, with Tom, with Vex, and they're absolutely strong right now. Lots of bounties. But, if you look at the champions that uh, Nameless have for them, there's a Rel, there's a Silas, there's a Nar. They have, uh, they even have the Lily asleep. If they're able to set up a massive uh, team fight here with the engage that Rel has found, because Re every single engage that Rel has found has been amazing. You know, four man, three man, multiple people have been getting caught by uh, their engages, and if they're able to follow up with that with the Nar OT. With the Lilia ulti as well and some damage from the Tristana, I feel like that could definitely win a team fight if they're able to burst down the Senna, the Vex, all these uh, really important carries oh. on the side of uh, Zero Mechanics. I would love to see a Lilia Rel combo. Oh yeah, that would be amazing. You see a uh, five man Rel Magnet Storm into a five man Lilia Sleep and then the Nar ulti. Oh man. Follow that up with like, imagine if Silas stole the Dawning Shadow from Senna and then, oh my lord, so much damage from that. I hate Umbro Glaive so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's, yeah, Umbro Glaive, Umbro Glaive Gaming. No, I mean, that's uh, I mean that's the power of it, right? It just it makes you clear your vision so much easier. If you look at the vision score that Senna has, 92, that is amazing compared to the 64 that Rel has. And it's a, it's it's... a real tough game here for Nameless. Wait, why are they setting up the Baron as a trap? 
Well, the Baron is spawning in a minute, so maybe they want to take that as soon as possible. I don't know, here comes a death rush. If anyone oversteps, then uh, they're dead. I mean, this is going to be a 5 on 2, however many people there are on him. Besides, in the bot lane. He does have TP, but he's on uh, defense duty right now. He has to clear all these waves so, out. Bro was sitting on one ward for a while, so... Yeah, the dragon now spawning in 45 seconds. Everybody has everything, it appears. Oh, no. Maybe no flash. Senna, no flash. No, no, no. Stana, no flash. Oh. oh. No flash. Thought one almost getting caught up there. Nobody would find that bar. And the Drake, th this Baron should be zero mechanics. Nobody, there's no, there's no other reason that it should not be there. Unless Thotan can find a miracle steal, it's uh, zero mechanics. But we'll have to see if Nameless fight for it. I feel like I feel like they could just give away the Baron. Fight for the Elder instead, which is spawning in 50 seconds. Actually, I don't even think they might. I don't even know if they'll go for the uh, Baron here. Looming Darkness Sphere not gonna land. The Senna W is, but I don't think that's enough. That's a well you catch out. That's not really you want to get. And yeah, like I said, they were not gonna go for the Baron because the Elder is up in 30. I don't think you can kill the Baron quickly enough and get to the Elder. So this is actually really instrumental. Tristana almost getting caught out there. Knock up onto the rail. Is the rail even going to be able to do anything? No. Just the failure is going to grab that kill. Abyssal dive, unfortunately. Not able to find a knock up. But that's a shutdown onto Tristana. Double kill now for oh, the Vex. No. Shadow Surge. Is he going to be followed up? Yes, it is. Is he going to click the button? No, he is not. But the Drake is spawning in five seconds. That's Elder. And that should be game for uh, zero mechanics here. I always like to see Elder. I think Elder is more important than Baron first. I can just yeah. turn the whole tide. I mean, they both can turn the whole tide, but. I mean, this is going to be a 50 50. Tatan is here. I don't think he has any here now. He should have vision. But we'll have to see. That's a double Too man. early. Oh, that's a double man. See, let's see. He goes for it. Let's see. No. Damn. Unfortunately, no. He did land the sleep onto Warwick. It almost got close, but uh, unfortunately, not able to find it. Now, the rest of uh, the mechanics are going to be recalling here. They're probably going to be oh. lining towards that Baron now. And uh, with the Exodia that they have, it should be game. Yep. Be lining oh. straight towards that Baron. They're going to ignore their uh, top wave. <laughs> yeah, who cares? You know, top wave for Nexus. That's the trade here. Yeah. <laughs> Who need to clear out waves when you can just destroy the enemy nexus? This Baron's health bar is gonna go very low, whittling down pretty slowly. I oh think. god, no, that went pretty quick. Yeah, but I mean, if, if, if you put Nameless's team there, that would be a lot quicker. But it is still pretty quick. They're gonna be able to get that. Oh, they now have the Baron, double. they have the Elder, and they have the Ocean Soul. They have Exodia on their hands right now, and. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't see any. Uh, I don't see any possibility. Don't get caught alone. Back. Don't get caught alone. They, uh, they need a wombo combo here from the rel from the Lilia if they want to do something. And uh, you know, it, it it makes me sad to see Tristan and Rel end up like this. They had such a great lane. They had such a great lead. They had that first blood, but then they just kind of entered. <laughs> and uh, there's not much else they can do now. I just realized Tristana doesn't even have Phantom. He went for the Collector, which is a really odd choice against this team composition. I feel like Phantom would have been so much better. Or honestly, if you wanted, you could you could have gone something along the lines of a uh, GA Cerildus if you want. Oh, GA would have been nice. Yeah. Especially considering <laughs> Elder. And he spawned, and you know, because he rocket jumped straight into them. But they're not even going to be worrying about the top lane wave here. They're just pushing in mid 5v5. They want to want to take control of this game. They want to double in hips. Now. Yeah, oh, they're safe. Oh, I mean, yeah, they landing. should, though. They have both buffs. Landing on the thing. If I was asleep, that would have been something amazing. But uh, knock up, they're not going to be landing. So much damage here. Root. Uh, Lilia has to go golden just from the poke. The dawning shadow. A little bit too late, unfortunately. And, uh, okay, Silas took the Dawning Shadow. I'm not really certain if that was the play, but here comes Orion with the Meganar. 
And immediately, zero mechanics just walk away. This is some amazing macro play there. You know, just respecting the Mega, Mega Nar. You don't want to give anything away. You have, you're in sole position of this game. And you don't want to risk it. You just don't. Yeah, no reason to throw it. Oh, it's quite a game. 40 minutes. This is what we were saying, you know, skating team composition. Once the game reaches this point, there's really not much you can do unless the team composition that deserves that nameless ass. Really unfortunate. Yeah. Honestly, I was thinking they were gonna hide up by blue side. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Another death brush game. Yeah, that is that is that is. No, I mean that would have been perfect because like Lily even walked in there alone. So yeah, she walked in there alone and then Silas followed up. Probably, and then... probably expected that uh, nobody was be there. But uh, if it comes a dawning shadow from Silas, you see it didn't do any damage whatsoever. And uh, they're gonna be slowly winning down this top lane now. Lots of damage there onto the Warwick. See something here. Tristana's now just recalled after cleaning that belt wave. And without the Baron on the Elder here, the, the siege is going to get a little bit more difficult. But they sh they sh they, this game should still be in their control. Alright. Respect. Of the Call of the Forge God, that's the Thylus here. And the. The, the waves are just getting there. That what in the hell? Tristana jumps forward, rocket jump, call of the Forge God onto the oh. team, almost catches out the Warwick here. Devour has to get caught out. Mistral Bolt not gonna land a field into everyone. And that was a pretty good play, honestly. I got a little bit scared there because I got flashbacks of that of that second uh, Ocean Drake fight. Tristana just jumping in blindly forward, but uh, they try to get the pick onto Warwick and Fate, unfortunately not able to land it. Looming Darkness, Mistral Bolt, so much damage, so much CC. As we are going to see the engage here from the Warwick, Orion has to flash away immediately, has to hop away immediately rather. Here comes the Shadow Surge onto the Tristana, didn't even see that one, immediately goes Golden is the Vecna with Infinite, the rest onto the Mininar here, but the front line of Nameless Org is just getting demolished. Lilia said already, Silas is at low health, has to go back to the fountain to heal up with the infinite the rest, but here comes the Hail Mary re-engage, Warwick is now shut down actually, massive Gnar into the turret, here comes the damage from the Tristana, he's just free firing in the back line, Silas now gonna get killed by the Tristana here, by the Senna rather, in the route from the Lunar Raids, from Senna is gonna catch him out at the turbo oh. and this game is over, the re-engage from uh, Nameless looked amazing, but it was just not enough. Nah. Zero frost mechanics. Able to tie up the Furious 1 and 1. And are able to bring it to a tie. We are going to be seeing you back into the third game. Uh, let's, let's see what the stats were. Oh, oh, sorry, <laughs> my bad. I threw it into the thing. My, I, I threw it into the uh, break too early. My bad. Oh no worries, yeah, no worries. Some stats. Here we go. Let me share my screen real quick. Yeah, I mean, pretty decent stats overall. Senna seven and three. Lots of damage. You could see Tristana is the one that deals the most damage. Uh, most damage per. I mean, gold per minute in their team. Which I guess makes sense considering everything was fed into her. Honestly, I didn't realize that Bex only died one time. That was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't either. But yeah, maybe maybe the call for Tristan really was probably was Guardian. Probably could have helped her quite a bit. All right, let's go ahead and switch this to break, and we'll get everything else ready. The score is now one one. Everyone, one one. And sweep to intermission.
All right, everybody, we are back. Oh, it is currently 1 1, and we are up the final game of the night. We have a run out of band, we have a switch band. Then we have Wreck and Yasso for ZMG bands. Are they gonna actually, they actually let the Cassidy and band go, or they let the Cassidy and get play? Let's see if it actually gets played. So we have game playing for top first pick. We did see a surprising round for Gangplank in the first game. 7-0, it was beautiful. Alts all across the board, just played really well. It was actually kind of, it's been a while since I've seen Craig playing. It's been a very long time, and he did not disappoint. All right, Nameless going with a vein. Hmm. Question is, is it Vane top or is it going to be Vane 80 carry? We got another Gragas. We saw Gragas in the first game. Wasn't too impressed with it, but it did end up working out in the end. Oh, Tom Kench. That was a very, very great uh, last game. Tom Kench did a lot of great saves. We'll see if he can do it once again. Numerous devourers were able to just, just save his team left and right. Oh, my shield just beautiful. All right, Lulu. Oh, Lulu and Vane for a bot lane? That's going to be pretty nice. No one can get away from the Vane with that, that combo. <laughs> All right, so we have the Ari ban. He was banning Ari. There's the cast sit in. Oh. Oh, Akshan? All right, they finally locked in Akshan. So do we think they're going to ban the cast in, or are they going to let it push through? Because they let it push through. It's going to be... <laughs> there's 60s, or 60 degrees. Uh, he's going to do really well with that, if he if it actually gets through. Oh, and then there's a cast in ban. That is a little unfortunate. I did want to see the Cassadon. But let's see if we can get a Zed. Is the uh, Six Degrees going to play Zed this game? Could use a little bit more AP, though. We have one Gragas. All teams don't really have too strong of an AP uh, setup at the moment. We'll see who they choose for the AP. There's an Orn matchup. Hmm. Honestly, I, I I like this combo. I really do like the combo. The Lulu Plymorph can actually ruin Tom Kench Devour. You can actually get that off. That's just going to be super annoying and can punish it. All right, there's the Rumble Mid. Who do we have for AP on the Nameless? Hmm. <laughs> the suspense by Gar. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's, uh, we're going to be switching over. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not really a play-by-play. -play, but I am really, I'm really like the Zululu Vein. I really think it's going to be a more devastating. So they really do have an edge with that. Never dying. Switch screens. Hmm. I'm just gonna. 
I've kind of already said what I think it's going to happen. I really, I'm really expecting to see a lot of his vein. And then Lulu just to be a, a from a buff on her. Hmm. I think, I I think Lou will probably end up more likely to actually focus dump cash for the polymorph just to prevent any of the escapes. She can do that, she can get rid of a lot of problems. Gang It'll also be a nice little counter against uh gang playing from being an ult away as well. So. Alright guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and send it straight to intermission. I'm just gonna wait for this game to go.
All right, we are back. Well, apparently we do have a bit of a pickle. We're waiting to find out what's going to happen. Apparently there was a swap um, after the 20 seconds. We're going to see how it's enforced. Uh oh okay 30 seconds until minions spawn all right beautiful five point we got some memen over here though <laughs> Honestly, I'm I'm thinking highly on this Lulu Bane. It really is a solid combo. Even though Lulu do get nerfed uh in the last two times, they increase her W by two seconds in the recent patches. Oh, we got Tom Kinch. Yeah. Question did they get seen? Oh. So both of them top start on the uh the side. Hmm. Interesting seeing both people starting on top side. I was not exa exactly expecting that, but. Bot uh, lane? Oh. Damn. Ooh, Rumble actually winning the poke. Ooh, playing a little ballsy. Tom Kench actually getting a little poke in. M missing the Tom. I wanted to see actually if this gangplank will actually be able to combo his barrels just right. Okay, good. I had to double check the scoreboard. The positioning is actually a lot better for Nameless on the bot side. Tom Kench really has to be careful about overextending. Overextend at the wrong time and he can just get clapped on. They do have two forms CC. They got the Vayne with the Condemn against the wall and the Lulu Plum. Tom Kench engage, and that should be an easy vic. Oh, Lulu Flash. Tom Kench has no heal. Tom Kench does have that beautiful, beautiful shield. 
and re-engages while the minions just start chunking down the vein. Goes in the gauge and the Ugh. Does the double exhaust? Oof. A little late by Trundle. We all know where Trundle is. He did show. And a nice engage by the Grunt. Hmm. Oh, yeah, now I get some free farm. Wait, Gangplank did not go back to base? And Jinx securing, securing the cryo set for boss side. Okay, so the next one's Infernal. Do we think it's gonna be a cloud? Ooh, there's the engage. Forge of the Gods fails. But he's still stuck in a bad situation. He will be forced to go back. Damn. We saw the first game, but the game plans all have been very crucial for the whole game style. So it's no, it's no surprise that we get a good game plan goal in this game as well. Three tower shots taken. <laughs> oh, they had but before the pillar was up. Easy does not get the knockout. I'm gonna get some free poke and a clean back. I'm wondering if Beamless is just taking a relaxation. Both objectives have been taken by a zero. Retire plate. And Horizon is up. It does.
Hmm. Rogers just doesn't know where to go. He doesn't know go by. He doesn't know go in the middle. There's nothing. He has no jungle camps up except for drugs. The only thing there is to do is actually show up in a lane. There's the alt. Isolated and Jinx goes down. We got a we got a vein alt in play. Ah, uh, humble loses. Okay, event horizon to proxy gangplank away from the minions. That wouldn't really do too much, though. I was a little surprised gangplank didn't get a bell ready to place. See, it would have been the best play. Oh, Lulu alt does not work. Six degrees seems really good with his own Ryzen. Decently placed. And here comes the Herald. If they can get a little bit more damage, that will be the first tower. Hmm. They didn't damage the tower enough right before the crash. If they would have if they would have hit the tower about one or two more times, the tower would have gone down. Sadly they did not take the advantage. After each plate is taken away, it does increase the defense, so they really missed out on an easier tower to take. They have set up Pryo. Bot lane Pryo. The Jinx is down for a little bit longer. If they don't start it soon. Uh. It shouldn't be. Oh, yeah, it was stuck. Shit. Hmm. Ah. Sadly, Hmm, good catch, good catch. I was like, I didn't even realize it was... I was looking elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice trap. Tunnel did get the ult off. Oh, nice. Oh, shit. <laughs> the dive and the fail. Jinx giving up bot lane. Come on, Gracchus, get out of there. That's simple teleport. I think like it could have been used at a better time, but, you know? Thane's just getting free farm, she'll take it. I 
I can't wait to see this uh, 06. I can't wait to see his vainly game. Yeah, I. Uh, I think Zone Sixty. If he can get, if he can get some stacks, he's just gonna be disgusting for this game. Oh no! Oh no! Wait, they backed off. Okay. Those gangplank salts. They were game changing last game. It might just be game changing this game as well. James just not even making it down this tower at all. I feel I feel our time would have been best spent mid lane. Orange is just getting free farm. They're not proxying Orn away from all the farm either. They're pushing the wave, and he's just getting free farm. Bane's getting free farm. Orn's getting free farm. I'm not quite sure what they're doing at all. It doesn't make any sense at all. I'd love to kind of be... What is their thought process if they're giving Orn free farm? Gave Vane free farm when Vane was ahead. Ooh. Fight for Drake. We have a Venom Horizon is down. There's the Force of the God. Um, can't save it with the Devour. Bad. Oh shit, Lulu's taking some damage. Oh, nice polymorph by Lulu. Can I actually stop the trundle? The trundle's down. Well done. Vane stuck in the Ven Horizon. Yeah. yeah. No contest. Here comes the game. Oh, the Gragas. Then we have the Cease. Oh. This Lulu actually able to put this vein into such a devastating position. We got the speed ups, we got the shields, we have the knock up. It'd be very questionable if they can even get to Vayne at this point. Orange getting free farm up top. Vayne was getting free farm. It just doesn't make any sense. So Grog is able to save the tower, though? What the...?
Oh, Vygar almost getting with the ult and does not. Just barely. The less HP a person has, the more damage Vygar does with his ult. Max damage is done, I believe, at 30%. They did let the Orn farm for free, and they let the Bane farm for free. This is just not going to go so hot for them. Lulu actually enabled with the shield. Nice. I think this might be pretty much over, shit. <laughs> oh. Vayne hitting the blast cone for some unknown reason. <laughs> we'll turn the vein into a shredding machine. Is there going to be any stops? To... I'm wondering what the, how much gold this vein has. This vein has got to have a disgusting amount of gold. If I had to take a guess, she's probably sitting about 2,000 now. Uh. Bane must just be waiting for a final. There it is. Got the Bork. And they got 40 seconds until the track's gonna be up. I'm pretty sure they can secure the next track as well. Council would be a nice, juicy extra bonus shield for everybody. Bonus armor, bonus magic resist. All they gotta do is just not get caught. It should be free for them. The 5,000 lead? Yeah. Vayne already with three items. It's just, she's just gonna shred this Drake. <laughs> Vygar. There's a sh. Ben Horizon lands. Go, Lulu. Get you, get you some. <laughs> There's the minions. Kind of a waste gameplay. The gameplay would have held it off a little bit. He could have. He could have wiped the wave. I don't know why he didn't. Yeah, there's no stopping this vein. Oh. Yeah. 
This just doesn't seem to seem like it's gonna be a fun match for them. Oh god. Whoa. Sorry, Viger. You lived a long life. I guess I am. I'm a little. I'm kind of chuckling just seeing <laughs> that on Lulu. But you know, thirteen stacks for the Magi's. Yeah, but we'll take it. Ooh, and the Grog steals. I think they're just memeing at this point. At this point, they're just memeing. Lou's saying, this is fine. Let's just all think about that. I see you. Zero sixty. Just, just taking it easy. There's no reason to force it. Yeah, we have we have four control wards on the bottom. Jeez. We need to find who didn't place a control ward and report them. <laughs> Or the team just playing with their food. Let's see if they actually will try to end this, though. Here comes Soul Point. Soul Point less than a minute. And they're going to be going for Baron. And they got pressure for two bot side. This is free for Baron. Things are just being discussed in here. Coming Jinx Alts, it's not gonna do enough. Oh no, there is only one guy. It's just me. I'm more I'm more of a color caster. It was an emergency, so we had they had to go. Either way, it's gonna be a very disgusting game though for them. The game's already over, it's been over for like ten minutes. Uh, uh, Sultan was called off earlier. There was another person earlier, and it's... I'm just covering in. <laughs> I mean, I knew this... I knew seeing the vein and Lulu was going to be a disgusting play. Oh! Oh, 
Question is, are they going to pay for the memeing, though? <laughs> I do actually need to look up the assists, though. Oh, uh, and I do need to update the scores. I'm not really sure what's going on here, why they're just kind of playing with their food. Are they just doing it for the KDF? I'm just gonna guess. There it is. Oh, no pencil. Farming stats, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. I'm like, yeah, they're just they're just they're just farming. I don't know. All right, let's see the post game stats, guys. Actually, it was kind of painful. So, ah, uh, there's not much to say. Uh, they were able to free farm top side, you know. Orn was able to free farm because Jinx kept pushing. They didn't proxy him off the wave. They just let him get his farm. Bane was left alone. She was able to farm. Uh, Jinx may have got the... They almost got the first tower early on, but they didn't hit the tower enough for the Rift Herald. The Rift Herald actually crashed, and it still left a sliver, so they missed the opportunity to get it early that the whole uh, tower down. Sadly, it was a missed opportunity, and then they left Bane to actually farm alone, and Bane just kept popping off. I mean, <laughs> it was a pretty uh, pretty quick game. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do the prediction. Uh, I shall let them do the predictions so, since I can't release the results. Let them uh, cash it out. Let me go ahead and look up for the CSS, see if they're on. If they're not on, I'm going to go ahead and read it out to the person. Okay, let's see here. Let's go ahead and go into the, the, uh, the official Discord and see if there's anyone streaming from the official ones. Oh, self promo. Camcom? Nope, that is old. Next, we can go ahead and look up the CSS. CSS is not streaming. We're going to go ahead and rate it out to another person. So it was a 2 1. 2 1 with the nameless Winnie in the trio. 2 out of 3. Mm -hmm. I'm Floss for you. Uh, I'm typically just a color caster. I just typically just stream. Uh, I wasn't expecting to actually do some casting today. It just happened to be this. It's just what happened. All right, so it is a CTS underscore LOL. They are not live, it looks like. They are not live. Okay, well, we're going to go and find another, another streamer who plays League of Legends. I read it out. Okay. 
You know, we you know, uh I know Saber Star, he's a decent guy. I might just go ahead and read him out. Saber. Let's Let's see. Saber Star? Ooh, you know, let's see if kill shots on. No, he needs some love lately. Kill shot. He's not on. Hmm. You know, let's uh let's go Saber Start. Saber Start is is live and he's playing some League of Legends. So we're gonna do we're gonna send it off his way. Alright guys, prepare for raid. We must raid Saber Start. This channel is for mature audiences only. Yeah, let's go ahead and do one one. Hmm, that screen needs to be fixed. You know, there's like a lot of things, right? Um, 